Howdy folks and welcome to another episode of SideQuest with me, your host Luke, the Ginger Bookworm. Hope you're doing well, hope you're fantastic, hope you're wonder bubble. Yes, I use that word, or awesome sauce, or tank faster karuni. <laughs> hope you're well, hope you're good. Come recording this on the Saturday, so hopefully you should be listening to this on the Sunday if you're in the future and listening to this in 2024. Uh, howdy, uh, how's it going? Uh, do people still dance? Let me know uh, if you're listening to this in the future, if people still dance in 2024. Uh, that'd be a nice little Easter egg. More than likely, if somebody is to, was and is to do that, I won't remember what you're talking about. But if you are listening to this in the future, please do let me know if people still dance, because I want to know if I'm still dancing. And if I'm not, I need a reminder so I dance again. <laughs> but um, I hope you're well. I hope you're good today. First of all, get all the mainstay, all the other stuff out the way. I want to say thank you to everybody who listened to my episode on the first day. Uh, Emily and me, as you could probably tell, if you've listened to it, you could see how much of love and passion I have for that movie, how much of a passion project it was for me to um, not just talk about that film, but research it and get a chance to watch it again. So I hope I've inspired um, you folks to want to go out and you know either buy the movie or at least um, get your ass on Netflix and uh, watch a bit of it, even if not all of it, just try it out, test it. Um, either way, I just hope that I've convinced a few people, a few of you folks, uh, to want to give it a go because, like I say, it's a generally beautiful movie and I think more people should experience it. It's a cult classic for a reason, you know. Um, but maybe I, I'm thinking I might do some more deep dives, you know, get more sort of movies that are um, mean a lot to me, I'm very passionate about, and maybe I do deep dives into them. There might be movies like, like Amelie that most people never heard of or movies that are so um, probably not people like on people's top 10 or top 100, but they mean a lot to me. So maybe I'll do more of them. I really, really enjoyed doing Amelie and me. So maybe I'll do some more in the future. We'll see. So far, the reception has been pretty positive. So there's a potentiality for it. I'll bring it back. Um, but anyway. Now that's out of the way, now they all all the updates and all that kind of things. Onto side quests, onto the juicy side small bonus episode that uh, I, I know people quite enjoy actually these side quests, which I'm glad they do. You know, I, I enjoy doing them. They're short, they're sweet, you know, you can get them done within thirty minutes to an hour. And uh, you can get on with your day or listen to more podcasts or, you know, audiobooks and stuff like that. So I'm gonna stop waffling on and all that stuff and I'm gonna get on with it. Because I know your time's precious and I don't want to waste it at all. So Today, I'm going to be talking about, uh, well, I'm going to do another book review. Well, I say book review, this is more of a graphic novel. So I'm going to do a graphic novel uh, review of Marvel's World War Hulk. Um, if you've been listening to prior episodes, you know that I've been mentioning, I've mentioned this book in my um, adventures in graphic novels. Uh, I, I did say that after I'd finished my read, which was Gears of War, um, that I was going to go on to World War Hulk. So I thought, you know what, I'd take the plunge, I'll stick to my word, and I'll jump right in. Um, first impressions, incredible. Uh, Hulk-tastic. Uh, it is everything that I wanted from a um, Hulk sort of story and more, you know. So, yeah, so I, I think it's going to be fun. So let's get into it, you know, let's get deep, let's get deep, let's get dark, let's get filthy, let's get dirty, shall we? Let's do this. So as I said, first impressions, Hulktastic, loved it, it was, it was incredible, you know. Um, take you back a bit. As I've mentioned in my graphic novel, uh, adventure sort of episode, I mentioned that I have read Civil War. And I've read Planet Hulk and I've jumped ahead a bit and I'm currently, well, say currently, I've read volume one of um, The Immortal Hulk. Now, little did I know, as I mentioned back then, that, that, that The Immortal Hulk takes place after World War Hulk. Well, actually, there's a few more I've since realised and I will get onto it in a minute. But there's, there's other series after um, World War Hulk, then Immortal Hulk. So I'm very far ahead with that series. So I'm probably not going to get onto that one anytime soon, sadly. But I have now feel like I've fully caught up because from reading this one, World of Hulk, I have realised that they are there are moments in this that make reference to 
the Civil War story. Because um, I assumed that Civil War was its own thing, with its own sort of shoot-off sort of story. Little did I know that actually it's part of this huge arc. Obviously, I knew it was going to be a big arc anyway, but I didn't know it was going to be a part of sort of the World War, sort of the Hulk sort of story. Um, the basic sort of premise of it is that Planet Hulk, Hulk gets sent off into a ship uh, because he's too dangerous by the Illuminati, which is uh, Reed Richards, uh, Tony Stark, Doctor Strange, uh, and Black uh, Black uh, Black Bolt, which I, I forgot to mention him last uh, uh, last time as well. But no, Black Bolt's in it as well. Uh, he's little unknown. He's an inhuman. Uh, he can't speak because if he speaks, uh, he will just crack the planet in half. Uh, so very powerful voice. Um, but oh, sorry, I've got a really bad itch. Yeah, that's it. Get the edge. Anyway, so Hulk gets sent off, and in the events of Hulk being sent off and landed on Sakaar and becoming a gladiator, the events of Civil War begin. And I'm not going to spoil the events of War for those of you who haven't uh, read it yet. Um, but if you've seen the uh, the movie, it's kind of the same sort of idea. There's a schism between uh, the different heroes. Some heroes want to, you know, stay anonymous, which is fair enough. Some hu- uh, some superheroes want to come out and sort of um, make their sort of alter ego be known. Like, for example, uh, it, but then again, you know, I'm not going to say it because... Um, it's a bit of a spoilers, but let's just say, you know, some heroes agree, some heroes disagree, and there's a schism, i.e. Civil War. And then that sort of gets wrapped up, and that's all done. And then World War Hulk takes place sometime after that. It, it's not really, I'm not really sure as to when. The, the book's not really specific as to when. But it's more just the fact of Hulk then comes back down to Earth and sort of seek, trying to seek justice. And... Um, the characters like Hulk's like, well, wh- where's this character? Where's that character? You know, uh, what's you know, kind of like I-, I was expecting a lot more resilience. This is all you've got. You've got like a, the the B and C team of the Avengers going up against me. You know what I mean? You've got no chance against me and my Warbound. What's going on? And that's when like some of the characters are coming along of like Hulk. You've been gone a long time. You know, a lot has changed. And this person's no longer here. This person's here. This person's retired. This person's blah, X, Y, and Z. And it's kind of that real... Like, obviously, at the moment, Hulk doesn't really care. But for the reader, that's really sort of interesting, the kind of thing to kind of see that moment where the banner starts to come through, the Hulk of, of kind of realising, shit, you know, a lot's gone down. Like, I'm still angry at you, and I'm still, you know, want my revenge. But for you, for the reader and for the for the character, it's it's a very sort of interesting sort of story beat where you realize oh well okay a a lot of time has passed and that the characters that he once knew are a lot different you know they've changed because of civil war some are more ruthless some are more caring um each one's different than the other and the world itself is it's much different there's superheroes are not what they used to be you know so that and that kind of plays into the story as well because in civil war it's not just the super the soups that are struggling it's also the people, the people, the humans, you know, us lot, you know, who don't have any powers are the ones that have the most sort of trouble. You know, there's now more crime. There's now more uh, fear of superheroes because of the whole civil war happened and, and all the fighting and all the killing. And then sort of people getting in the way when people are not getting in the way, but people getting caught in the crossfire. Uh, better terminology to use, really. Um, getting killed and hurt. And it's more the fact of it's really interesting because. When Hulk comes down, you would think, oh, everybody would be scared of Hulk. Everybody sort of will hate him. And it, it turns out, actually, no. You know, there is a huge sort of quote-unquote fan group of Hulk fans who see Hulk as a saviour. Because he's coming down to kill the superheroes. And not just the superheroes, but the main group of heroes. You know, Reed Richards, leader of the Fantastic Four, Doctor Strange, Tony Stark, uh, Black Bolt. You know, these are the Inhumans. They're all evil to majority of humanity at this point in time in the whole arc you know so when hulk comes down and beats the crap out of them and the the fights are pretty epic you know they, they are generally epic some of the one of the reasons why i'm such a big fan of the hulk is not just the character but i love the art of hulk and i'll get onto the art in a minute even though i know you folks this is the very audio base and you can't see it i don't know how i'm going to talk about the art but i try my best uh, i try to use very big descriptive words and maybe we'll sort of 
meet in the middle ground of you somewhat visualizing it. But um, coming back onto the onto the story, um, that yeah, like I said, they see Hulk as, as a hero. You know, they see him as as the new leader, as the savior to save them from the tyranny of Tony Stark, to save them from you know the um, overwhelming oppression of the other sort of superheroes. Because a lot of all the main group, they've kind of gone into hiding. You know, then you've got the B team and A team. You know of avengers which are like it's a group of like you've got hercules and Ares, which again pretty strong and powerful sort of um superheroes in their own right but they're not really a level sort of avengers they're more sort of west coast avengers you know there's more sort of uh, what you call in when the other guys are not there you know kind of yeah the b team the a team not the best they're pretty good but they're not a star you know uh, so they go up against it. You've got She-Hulk as well. And She-Hulk, like, if I haven't really said this before. I think I have. But I've got a huge crush on She-Hulk. I simp for She-Hulk. And is that the right word, simp? I don't know. Maybe I've used the wrong word. Maybe I've kind of put myself into a hole there. We've really been really awkward. I don't know. I can't change it now. Um, but I've got, I've got a huge sort of crush on, on She-Hulk um, as a character, you know. And when she comes down, it's, it's, it's again, they have a very sort of epic sort of fight. Um, but even with She-Hulk, she's not as strong as she was, um, obviously because the, the, because of the events of Civil War and stuff that happens in there. She's not as strong as she was, so she can't go up against Bruce, go up against um, the Hulk as much as she could have before. So you know, even though it's an epic fight and she's trying to calm him down and relax him, doesn't really go as planned. But the story is. Like I said, it's it's a very interesting one because once you realise that it, it links in with Civil War, you see this story differently. I saw this story way differently because I wasn't ex- I was expecting full on war, the Hulk to come down, humans and superheroes against the Hulk, his army and the Warbound. That's what I was expecting. I wasn't expecting Hulk to come down and be seen as a hero, as we see as a savior. It sh- completely flipped my perspective of what was going to happen and what characters um how characters are going to react and how they were going to perceive each other you know what i mean i it completely flipped my perspective um and going in with that again it just made the story different i i saw for example i'm not a big fantastic four fan i i, I don't not that i don't enjoy them i've just never been a big fan of their stories but to see you know put them put on trial and the humans the us lot you know the people who haven't got powers who can't defend themselves as well as the soup soup could being on trial putting these heroes on trial and being like you know my cousin or brother or husband died because of reed richards experiments you know uh my best friend was killed because of tony stark or black bolt was the reason why you know i can no longer hear that sort of thing, and it's just that it's 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 the, it's the side stories that you don't hear about in in comic books. In comic books, it's always the hero, no matter how much collateral damage, how much buildings have been destroyed, you never hear about the people that got trapped in those buildings. As far as you just assume that those buildings were empty, you know what I mean. You don't, you never think about the people that get hurt in the background because why should you? The story's not about them. The, the story doesn't focus on them. You never have, like, when you read a comic book, you never have moments of, like, oh, uh, Tony Stark just took on the Mandarin and the Mandarin destroyed a building with his uh, rings of power. And you don't get, like, a like a few, like an extra two, three pages of somebody being in panic looking up and the building just crushing them to death. You know what I mean? You're not given that visual aesthetic so you don't visually feel sorry for them it's more just the fact of you just either assume that building's empty or you don't care and you move on because at the end of the day the whole point of the story is tony stark against the mandarin you know what i mean it's hero versus villain it's the same with movies and that it's not just comic books it's the same with films and all different types of media that when you see these sort of things you see them and you just don't assume about the collateral damage you go yeah epic you know good guy versus bad guy you know friend versus foe friend versus friend that sort of thing you know that's all you really care about so when you see these moments where these characters are being put on trial you actually realize oh god yeah these versions of the characters even though what they are trying to do is the betterment for mankind is done in such a way that it their judgment is clouded of what is perceived as right you know what i mean it's like the idea of like for example thanos we all know thanos he, he's a big evil character villain 
you know, he kills, he destroys worlds. He is a force of uh, evil. You know what I mean? He's just he's just a natural sort of force. You know, that he, he's like a wave. He's like a like a reaper for Mass Effect. He's just uh, the oncoming storm. Now, the version in the comic books is different to the one in the MCU. The one in the MCU has the idea of, I am the good guy because I am trying to... Yes, I'm killing loads of people, but that just means that there's more room for life. There is more room for resources that we can all survive in this ever-expanding universe. You know, it seems very small and that we can all survive because we're not all sort of warring and we can call the numbers and that sort of thing. Um And on sort of fantasy sort of side, he's the, he's the hero. You know, he's not the villain. And it's the same with the Hulk. You know, the Hulk just sees himself as trying to help. Everybody sees the Hulk as the monster. You know what I mean? So in everybody's story, you are the hero in your own story. And again, if you watch, if you read Civil War, you can see that Tony Stark doesn't see what he's doing is, is bad. Same with Reed Richards. Same with um, Doctor Strange and uh, Black Bolt. They don't see themselves as bad guys. They just saw themselves as we have a problem. We have tried to deal with the Hulk problem in tons of different ways. We are some of the smartest men in in the in the world and probably in the Marvel in the in the Marvel universe as well. Um, we can't crack this. We can't kill him. He can't die, and we don't really want to kill him because he's our friend. So the best thing we can do is get rid of him, uh, drug him, knock him out, put him in a spaceship shoot him off into space and fingers crossed that kind of solves the issue you know that kind of solves the problem and in a way it does it does and in their in their idea in their mentality and their sort of uh, story arc their own life that was a good decision but then they don't realize how that affected bruce how that affected hulk how that affected him and then again for the strife that he went through and the issues that he went through on plat in planet hulk and you know his reasoning for wanting to come back and to seek revenge, you know, for the most, some of the most smartest people in the Marvel universe, they were actually quite dumb in how, how they handled the issue. And a lot of this, this story lets you know about it. Like, don't wrong, there, it is epic, and there are tons of, of fights. Like, nearly every page is a fight, but there are moments where all the other characters just kind of prove to you, like, we're not all the heroes in our own story. We are not the. We don't know everything, and we we can't solve everything. And a lot of like a lot of the sort of heroes, as well as a lot of the sort of humans, uh, kind of just make these sort of Illuminati, as that, that's what they're called, these governing bodies of the um, of the planet. You just proved them like you're meant to be the smartest men in the universe, but you're dumb. You make some of the bad decisions, and your decisions where you think you're doing good, you ne it's it's like the idea of uh, from Jurassic Park, you know, from Ian Malcolm. He's like, just because you know you didn't just because you could you didn't stop to think if you should you know what i mean and that's kind of i'm, I'm cannibalizing it that's kind of the idea with, with their actions so coming back to the hulk when he comes in and he shows them their their ways and the, the lengths that they go through to try and stop him you know it, it, he sh shows them and he shows humanity of like you see me as the monster you look you will look at me as if i'm the bad guy but look what they've done to you look at your world since i've been gone I could have stopped them, right? I could have stopped all of them from doing all the things to you. But I wasn't here because they sent me away. And look what they got away with when I couldn't stop them, you know? And it, again, I just love that. I love that parallel, that kind of idea where Hulk... Hulk... If, if anything, he's not Hulk anymore. He's... If, how can I explain it? The best way to explain it is... he Banner is Hulk. Hulk is Banner. Right. But one of the things I love about this story is that Banner and Hulk are one in the same at this point. They are used, they are both in control where it used to be. One was in the back seat, One was driving at this stage. Both of them are at the, the about the wheel. So Banner has the, has the brain, has the mind, whereas Hulk has the strength and the brawn and the durability has control of the power, and the, the, like the, the body, for example. Banner has the brain. Hulk has the body. They both agree finally for one time in their life they both agree on something and that is revenge so they're both one in the same so you get a very sort of uh, coherent shall we say um hulk we get a very sort of clever sort of hulk where he is sort of he is banner was the fact of look i'm showing you you know what i mean i've come for revenge i've come to 
get revenge on them. And it turns out that I'm not just getting revenge for myself. I'm getting revenge for all you people that these people have done wrong to, you know. And again, it's just a very interesting dynamic as well as, like I said, the fight scenes are incredible as well. The art is 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 wonderful. Like like I said, I don't know how I'm going to do this because it's a very sort of um, audio sort of based. Um, but it's very sort of what you can imagine. It's Hulk at his strongest, you know. It's Hulk at his most powerful. He's up and what's word can I? Change? It's it's very sort. It's very visceral. It's very. Um, here you go. Trying to use my English literature degree <laughs> as best as I can from like I haven't done English literature since senior school, uh, but I, I you know I write and all that, so I have a huge lexicon of words, and I'm trying to sift them at the moment, which would be the best way to explain this. Probably this wasn't a good idea this part, um, but he's very bulging. You know, he's very big. He's very muscular. You know, he's very much of like you've seen the Hulk at his were at his strongest this is hulk at his most angriest and as we know with the hulk the angrier he gets the stronger he gets he's already angry as it is you know he's already pissed off as as it is you know what i mean at uh at you know the fact of all the events that happened in um, planet hulk and he's angry at the way that um and he's just getting angrier they're attacking him people that once his friends are at- are attacking him everybody's he's trying to get he's trying to be like i'm trying to save him i'm trying to show the people that you know these uh i i can't believe what they've done well i haven't been here i can't believe this person's no longer here i can't believe they let this happen so he's getting angry and angry angry at, at, at the minute and as you can imagine he's getting bigger he's getting stronger he's getting more veiny more more bulging he's more he's having muscles that like are just appearing just uh, each scene is just him getting bigger and bigger and bigger and stronger. And with, it's like, it's kind of like in an RPG, you know, the more people you fight, the more um, enemies and bosses that you take on, you level up and gain XP. It's like every single superhero that he goes up against, he just gets stronger and gets bigger by every scene, By which by the end of the, of the story of the series, he is gargantuan. He's huge. He's he's a big boy, yeah, big, strong, angry boy. And he gets to the point where he's just like, "That's it, I'm done," you know. And yeah, I don't really want to spoil it. You know, the ending to this. I think the ending of it is is very, is quite poetic, really, where he comes down for revenge, and he sees how the world is, and not just sort of tries to write it but also is fed up of it you know what i mean he he realizes that his need for revenge wasn't needed because even though he's now brought revenge on himself and also revenge on the on humanity from these tyrants he's also realized that i just i can't be asked with with it it never ends the 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 avarice never ends it's always constant like i'm either going to be the villain or, you know, I'm going to be the monster. What's the difference? You know, a villain you can easily sort of forget and put away into prison and then just lock away the key. Whereas a monster is constantly there. You always fear the monster. You don't fear that the villain is under your bed. You fear that the monster's under your bed or the monster's in your cupboard or the monster will come get you when it's dark. And um, there is other things as well. There are other sort of story beats that kind of lead to this. But in the end, he just kind of goes, that's it, I'm done. And, uh, yeah, I'm not going to say any more about that. You know, there, there is a bit more to it, but I'm going to leave that bit purposely vague so you guys can, can read it and check it out for yourself. But overall, it's just a, a fantastic story. It's, it's a fantastic, Hulk-tastic, best word I can use, sort of approach to the character. And from going in, just I, I thought going into this story that it was just going to be the Hulk going up against some of the strongest Avengers. You know, that was my sort of idea going in. Kind of like Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe, which is another fantastic um, one-off sort of series that I highly recommend, where the Deadpool goes away, goes across the MCU and just kills every villain and kills every superhero. Uh, it's a fantastic little um, series. I highly recommend that one, especially if you're a Deadpool fan. 
So, but that's what I assumed. It was just going to be the Hulk against loads of different Avengers, against the Fantastic Four, the X-Men, you know, all that jazz. Um, but coming into this and realising that it follows on from Civil War and um, you get to a continuation of how the world looks after the events of that and who's in power, who's in charge, and the Hulk sort of realising, oh, the world's a lot worse than I left it, and that if I had never left, if they had never gotten rid of me, this never would have happened. Now, did they do it because they knew they could get away with it without me saying anything? Or did they? was this always bubbling up and was them sending me away was just kind of a coincidence? That's the kind of question that this... Uh, this story sort of brings up in Bruce and again, Bruce starts to sort of ask himself the questions of like, I am seen as the monster, but at the same stage, I am also the one that keeps balance in the planet. I'm the one that stops the heroes from getting too big headed and too ahead of themselves. Because again, if, you know, if I was here, then I wouldn't, I would have stopped Tony doing what Tony did. If I was here, I would have stopped Reed and Dr. Strange and, Black Bottle and all that, I would have stopped them doing what they were doing. They wouldn't even dare to do it if I was here. And they wouldn't have, you know. And it's that kind of thing of like, was it coincidence that they sent me away? Do they really want to send me away because they want it to bear it for me, as they keep telling me? Or is it the fact of they sent me away because they just wanted to do this thing? Which, again, if you haven't read Civil War, go read Civil War and then read this series and you'll have sort of the same sort of perspective. But it's a very interesting sort of questions it asks the reader and also asks Bruce and Banner himself of like, well, what is my, what is my worth? Well, I'm seen as the villain, but, and I'm seen as the, the monster for some, but also I am the balance without me, things go into chaos. And now I'm back. Uh, I am going to restore chaos. I'm going to restore balance. And he does, he does restore, restore balance. And the people uh, who are sort of welcoming of that, you know, people are like, you know, you you the man Hulk. You know, you are the savior. This wouldn't have happened if you were if you were gone. You know, and by the end of it, you kind of realize, yeah, that's true. You know, so it's a very interesting sort of thing. Like I went in think expecting war. I expect went in expecting full on epic fights. And don't get me wrong, you get them in troves. You get one on one battles with many, many, many different characters. You know. Um, should I? I'll mention. I'll mention some of the obvious ones. I won't mention some of the n- surprise ones. But you have like the thing um, from Fantastic Four go up against um, the Hulk. You've got you know She-Hulk, you know as a fight. You get sort of uh, Hercules because Hercules is, is again a very strong individual. He goes up against um, uh, Hulk. You know you get a uh, sort of Black Bolt Reed. So each one of them has their own sort of like fight. You know. Yeah, Black Bolt, you've got Tony, you've got Reed, and then you've got Doctor Strange. Each one of them try their hardest and go as far as they can. Um, and the fights are, are, you know, are generally epic. You do get it, but I think in the underlying tones of it, if you just look over the fact of it's just war, you know, and you look under the undertones of, as I explained, the whole story beneath, you know, you read between the lines, for example, you actually see what the story is about. And again, I think it's kind of humbling. And like I said many, many times, this is why I enjoy Hulk stories, because a lot of people just assume, like a lot of people just assume when you read the Hulk, you are just going to get smash, 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 big dummy, you know, and that's it. There is a lot more to the Hulk and a lot more to the Hulk stories. It's just if you go in thinking that it's just all smashing and grabbing and that's it, then that's what you're going to get. But if you go in with an open mind and you go in with the perspective of who Hulk and Banner are and, you know, the struggles that they're both dealing with and how they are perceived, not just by uh, humanity, but also perceived by their friends uh, and how sort of Banner perceives himself, you kind of realize, oh, this is a lot deeper than I... Uh, than I thought, and I would get. I'm getting more enjoyment out of it, which I hope. Well, I would hope you'd get more enjoyment out of it once you realise it like that. But yeah, so that's um, that's about it, really. That's the sort of quick, sort of uh, short review of uh, World War Hulk. Uh, if you've read it, sort of let me know on Twitter. If you haven't read it, uh, check it out. Obviously, before you check it out, uh, read. Get yourself Civil War um, story first. Read for that. It's 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 not as long. It's a, it's a shorter sort of story, but it's it's still pretty pretty good. Um, and then that will sort of get you ready. So uh, what I would recommend is read Planet. Actually, no, tell you what, eh, 
better yet. Because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to put him in order in my head. Here's, here's better yet. Planet Hulk is where it begins. They shoot him off. So read Planet Hulk. Then read Civil War for the pre. So think of it as the as the prelude. So you've got uh, what's happening on in Planet Hulk is is happening. You've read it during the events of Planet Hulk. Then is Civil War. So it's uh, Planet Hulk, Civil War. Then read World War Hulk. And there are other series like you've got, um, for example, you've got uh, where is it now? Right, you've got the Fall of Hulks. That one, I think that one comes after Planet Hulk, and you've got After Smash, which I think is is after World War Hulk as well. I'm just looking for it because usually at the back of the graphic novels they usually give you hints of the next uh, story or next stories or next next ones you should check out. So there are ones afterwards, and obviously I I can't recommend them yet because I haven't read them, so I'm not sure what order they come in. But when I give them a read, obviously I'll. Uh, I'll let you folks know, and then obviously tell you which one recommend which ones to go for next. But yeah, you know, check them out. The, the incredible Hulk is, is a lot deeper than what people give credit for, and I, I hope that you know I've managed to convey that as best as I as I can for you folks listening. Um, generally, Hulk is, is a fantastic character, and I just I want I want to give him more love. The big green guy, you know, a lot of people just see him as a big brute, and I just feel like he, there's there's more to it. Maybe I'm reading more into it than I need to. That's a potentiality, but I don't care. You know what I mean? I I love my version of the Hulk. I love my ideas and concepts of the Hulk. And um, if you watch the MCU movies now, you will see since Avengers and onwards, you know how they're handling the Hulk. They're also taking this route as well. It's not just me sort of reading too much into it. They're sort of taking it on as well with the both struggles between Banner and Hulk, which we saw in uh, Infinity War. Um, and obviously Endgame, where we saw their sort of dynamic sort of change as well as how they're perceived and how they are um, taken in by everybody. Uh, She-Hulk is coming out soon, so I hope I can, we can watch She-Hulk, which again, I'm a big fan and uh, sort of big crush on She-Hulk, so I really look forward to that series, and we're going to get more uh, Bruce there, and we're going to get more the Hulks, so and hopefully that will lead on to Red Hulk and uh, A-Bomb and uh, she, uh, she Red Hulk and all that. So I, you know, I really hope it goes in that direction. We will see as in as into where uh, it goes um, with that, but we'll have to wait until I think summertime when that comes out. Um, but yeah, so that's 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 the Hulk, you know. So. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm currently reading uh, Cujo, um, Stephen King, which I'm, I, I'm not going to go into full details now. Maybe I'll do a full sort of video of audio about you know my adventures with Stephen King. Maybe that should be an interesting one to people listen to. But I'm currently reading Cujo. Um, so that's my next read. And then I don't know what I'm going to read after that. I've got so much to get through. But I'll figure it out and I'll let you folks know. So, um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope I inspired you. I hope I uh, brought you into the world of Hulk and I've changed your perspective. I've done many, many videos on Hulk. Many videos. Uh, many audio um, episodes uh, talking about the Hulk now. So I hope that I can, I have uh, convinced uh, you folks to f check Hulk out more. Um, but if anybody listening to this uh, has any other ideas or any other um graphic novel stories and it doesn't have just have to be marvel like if you got any any stories in the dc or any sort of other sort of stories kind of like you know one off like v vendetta that sort of thing um if any other sort of graphic novel stories that you think i'd like or be interested in by all means let me know on twitter um you can find me on nerdstalgic underscore pod or just type in the nerdstalgic uh podcast and you should be able to find me there uh, on twitter if you just listen to this on spotify don't forget to rate and share with your friends and you know all that jazz let people know spread the word of what i'm doing here you know the more people uh the, the more people see it the more grand and big sort of plans and things i can do and more feedback and the more i can improve so the more people listen the more people you tell the more people that listen the more feedback i get back and vice versa the better i become the easier it is to do this the more confidence i get in myself so the more sort of you get uh, instead of a very shy very hidden away version of myself you get a very open very sort of whimsical version of me 
And uh, yeah, I think it'd be more, more fun, you know, to, to bring more people into this small family that we have at the moment. Uh, also, before I go, one thing I just remembered, we managed to hit our, my, our goal. Uh, I had a goal of when I started this in January that I wanted to reach um, 150 uh, views, 150 listens um, by summer. I have now reached 150 um, listens. I am currently 100. It's currently sitting 154, 50, 154, 156, I believe, uh, currently, uh, which is fantastic. And hopefully, my next goal is 200. So hopefully, we can reach 200 again before summer. Um, and yeah, who, who knows where we we'll get to? You know, if we're lucky, maybe we'll get to 300, maybe. 350 400 by year's end you know if we go at this rate we'll see fingers crossed you know got loads of goals and you know every small step you know big steps small steps um and yeah i just want to say thank you again you know uh i want to say thank you for everybody who's listened and helped me get this far um and expect more good stuff uh to come so yeah so i'm gonna stop waffling check me out on twitter nerdstalgic underscore pod uh don't forget to rate if you're listening on spotify and share with your friends and that is everything so as always stay sexy stay active i love you all peace and thank you for listening to today's episode